Hi there, amateur radio followers and Drake affectionados and all my other friends and followers. So uh, I guess people are tired of me posting ham radio videos these days. Well, it's kind of been a fad for me to fix these old radios lately. And I'll probably get over it. But for now, I have a couple broken ones that I bought and I'm trying to clear them out, get them all figured out. Anyway, this is a Drake tr Four that I've had for a while now and I repaired some problems where there were some shorted tubes that had blown up the uh, B plus resistors so I got those bad tubes out and put in some new B plus resistors and this radio pretty much worked except that the AM mode wouldn't work and I kept thinking okay it doesn't receive on AM and I guess the reason was this little K2 relay here would pull in when you're receiving an AM. And I guess this will shift the 9 megahertz oscillator to 9.001 from what I read. And I guess AM will not work in that mode. So you end up hearing a carrier on AM, which is the BFO, which is this crystal here. So anyway, I'm trying to figure out, okay, why doesn't this relay in AM mode, why does it... Uh, kick in and I tried looking at a TR4C to see if its relay would kick in in AM receive mode and it didn't so this K2 relay then I've taken off the feed wire this on the TR4C feeds with 150 volts from the regulated tube which is right here this is a 150 volt regulator using a, uh, a tube's gas as bias, well, an OA2 actually, which is not a tube, but it's a gas-filled device. And so the power comes in down through here, and I'm seeing like 160, 170 volts. So I don't think this is feeding from OA2 on this older TR4, which is not a TR4C. Anyway, this wire here is the sink or the ground so the relay will go through this ground but actually the relay is powering other circuits through its windings which is kind of nefarious and sneaky but that's what it's doing so i trace this wire it ends up over here and that wire is is one of these so this actually then goes down to the transmitter king circuit and one of these goes to king circuit which actually ends up over here going into the finals, that's one part of it. This other wire goes back to here, and it's this wire right here exactly. And then we're left with this board, which in itself is an interesting little corbinundrum. And I'm just looking for shorts, so on my meter here, it's been showing all sorts of varying resistances. and. Am I still connected here? I'm still connected there. Um, or am I not? I'm connected there. Yeah, so let me show you. Okay, I'm still grounded. And anyway, long story short was I found that there's some type of variable ground that is on this line here. And this is a circuit which is in the schematic. And I'm trying to find out what can be shorted here. So I find there's a capacitor down here with a bit out of it. So you can see that there's a capacitor that has a little bit chewed out because the screw went in. So every anything you find wrong with a Drake radio is usually due to assembly problems. The components are wonderful, but I think they get put together sloppy sometimes and they run for years, but then something jostles and a problem happens. So that little little cap could have a short. I've been trying to get this board out and this board is really soldered in here well, but then I found something else really suspicious. And if you look way down in here, there's a big solder glob on here. So you know, I'll show you the glob. So another weird assembly problem here was somebody has this weird solder blob on here 
you can see it's hitting, it comes off this um, IF or transmitter can, and it will hit the case. So I moved the pin over a bit, but I'm going to just pull that solder blob off and redo it. So, and that could have been touching very slightly and causing a variable resistance. So you get problems like this. And the whole problem was that there was too much ground on this terminal and it would make the relay pull in when it shouldn't. This relay would always pull in when the rig was turned on. So no matter what, if the rig was turned on, this would pull in. Um, if you move the uh, mode switch to the two functions that ground it, so um, calibrate and SSB will ground, well, they will basically short out the relay's primary and make it not operate. On AM and CW, the relay operates. And in those modes, this relay would pull in no matter what. It would never be out. So I figured that this ground here was shorted somehow and on the K2 relay. And so it K2 relay grounds through this pin, through this wire, which is purple, and it ends up on this purple stripe wire over here on this little board here. And I think one wire goes to the transmit circuitry. One wire comes from here. It's this wire here. And then we have these circuits here. So looking at this, it goes through this resistor here, and then a bunch of wires kind of scatter off into these tubes and everything. So then I started drilling down to find out real problematic errors, and I kept getting resistance, which would go from 20K to 150K to 3 meg, dancing all around. So I'm thinking it's that little item down there. So we'll see. I'm going to clean that joint out, clean up some wiring, and we'll try it again. So if that works, I'll report that it works. Thanks for watching. And yeah, it's probably been like eight hours into this thing trying to figure it out. It's just not a great way to spend your life because... <laughs> it's not, but it takes so much time to figure these things out. I've yanked out all the tubes. I've yanked out everything trying to figure out, okay, what is causing this thing to ground? And it looks like it might be that connection, but I'm not sure yet. I'm going to try and fix it. So wish me luck. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.